Hey friends, John paint with me today a seashell on the seashore. All right, before we get started, you'll want to gather your materials for this project, especially if you're following right along with me. Make sure you have water jars, paper towel for blotting, and some watercolor paints, of course. I'm using my Schmincke set of 12. And today I'm gonna to be using a single brush. I'm just gonna be using my Lebenzin small brown synthetic brush with a three quarter inch bristle. And my paper today is my Paul Rubens watercolor journal. I absolutely love this journal. It's been so much fun to just fill the pages with all these different paintings and I'm having a blast. So let's just do another one. And I've already applied some tape around the edge so we'll have a perfect white border at the very end. Be sure to download my reference photo. There's a link for that in the description below. Now to get started, I always start with a sketch or almost always start with a sketch. And for this one, I definitely want to have a little drawing just to help guide my painting decisions. It's helpful when you're starting out to just imagine the object that you're drawing surrounded by an envelope or something like a tight sheet around it. So you don't wanna draw all the little bumps on the shell right away because that's just jumping into too much detail too soon. So just draw an envelope of the shape first. It's also helpful to decide where it's gonna be placed on your drawing. So I'm gonna decide on the corner right about here and the bottom proportion of the shell. And this is just a journal entry, you guys. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm gonna bring it down a little bit lower. You can always change a decision where you, when you're using a pencil with an eraser. So I'm gonna bring it almost to the bottom of the composition just so I have more room for the sand and for the skyline with the ocean behind it. In case you're wondering why I decided to change that. I'm leaving out the bumps for now and just trying to draw the shape of the shell first with taut edges, crisp lines, just for now. And of course this cast shadow is gonna be a very important element to this painting to help it feel 3D. So definitely include the shadow. With our envelope shape very lightly sketched in, now we can go in and tighten up the shapes. You're gonna to wanna to take note of any areas that are gonna be white, where you wanna preserve the white of the paper, such as the highlight on the tip of the shell here. But mostly just draw the most important shapes that you see, meaning areas where you have the darkest shadows and contours of the shell that are gonna matter when you apply your paint, especially the outline, of course. But don't press too hard. Remember, we want to cover it up with paints and we don't want all the pencil marks necessarily showing through. So I'm starting with the bottom of the shell right here with the little front of the shell and starting to edge out those little shapes. There's this little overlapping piece of shell right here. And then all of this is in shadow. And in fact, I'm gonna erase this line intentionally because I want this to be a lost edge. What that means is that we have two shadows converging, the shadow on the side of the shell and the shadow that's cast by the shell. And we don't wanna to see too deeply into the details. If we lose that edge or just paint through it in one shape, that's gonna be a much better painting ultimately than if we draw a hard line there and paint too many details in the shadow. Now I do want a hard line around this shadow shape. So I'm getting real specific with that shape. And things that you can draw within the shadow would be some of these little ridges that are catching the light. But actually I'm gonna start with this circle shape, this semicircle that's coming around. This is a contour line. It's helping us make sense of the shape of the shell, how it curves around. And so all of these lines that are coming around and encircling the shell, those would be considered contour lines those are also helping us understand the three-dimensional form of the shell. If you just draw the outline of the shell only, you're not gonna get a sense of its weight, of its depth, of its presence. So add contour lines and add shadows, and that will help it look much more realistic. Now at the top of the shell, I'm adding those bumps. Since we already drew the outline of it, we can have a better idea of where those are placed. There's three strong ones here at the top, and then another one that's coming down, curving more towards the side. And then from there, it just kind of slopes or curves down. I'm gonna draw the strong shadows. There's one here that creates a triangular shape as it sneaks behind this other bump. And from there, I'm gonna start drawing light shapes since it's mostly shadow right here. This is a light shape and then a shadow shape snaking in between those bumps. And then I'm gonna add another contour line. This one really intersects the exact middle of the shell pretty much. So if you wanna draw that middle one first, and then from there you can add, there's two strong stripes that come on this side. So start with the overall stripe shape, and then the bumps are in between the stripes. So here's a bump, 
here's a shadow on that bump, and here's the third major bump on this contour line. I'm not drawing every single line or every single detail, just locating and taking note of the placement of those contour lines and those important bumps. Okay, so on the other half, we can continue on with another stripe on this side of those bumps. This one's a little skinnier, and these bumps are gradually getting smaller as we come towards the front of the shell. Okay, and then we have one more contour line we wanna include, and that one pretty much intersects in between this line and this line. This one's right in the middle. And then inside of these two contour lines, we have these little stripes that are going up towards the back of the shell. They don't have to be perfect, just include enough information so that we get a sense of the shape, the kind of shell that it is. Some of these we're going to need to avoid with the paint, preserve the white of the paper. That's why it's important to draw them in. There we go. So we've got our rough sketch in of the shell. Um, I'm gonna add a little shadow shape in the sand right here. And then the rest we will do with paint. So when you're doing anything that involves a landscape, it's generally best to start from the back and work your way to the foreground. Where you've got this strong line with the sea and the sky meeting the sand, you could either make that a hard line or a soft line. Now, I'm gonna try to make it a wet and wet soft line where the blue connects to the sand. The reason for that is that I want it to just recede. I want it to move back into space. And the softer those edges are, the more it's gonna appear that it's going back. Whereas here, we're gonna be doing a lot of hard lines and it's gonna feel like it's coming forward. That's what we want. We want it to look like this is the closest thing to the viewer in this composition. All right, so let's start with wet and wet in the background. It's gonna be helpful to pre-mix your paints. So if you actually want to grab a second brush to do the mixing, that can be helpful. I'm gonna take a separate round brush just for mixing some colors here ahead of time. And I have two different blues on my palette. I have a Prussian blue and an ultramarine blue. And I think we're gonna test out one first here. This is the ultramarine. It's a very warm blue and I want it to be slightly cooler. So I'm gonna mix in a little bit of the Prussian blue and have a combination of the two. I think I like that. And then with my other brush, you know what, I'm gonna have three brushes today. <laughs> Can't have too many brushes, right? Okay, I'm gonna take a half inch flat brush and this is what I'm gonna use to wet the paper. This one I'll use for the sand tone, which I'm gonna mix up ahead of time. And I'll use this one for the blue. <laughs> okay, so if you don't have three brushes, that's okay. Just rinse in between your colors. I'm gonna mix up the sand tone. It's not really yellow, is it? It's kind of this, mm, tannish gray. I am going to start with yellow ochre. Let's just see if this is a good base color. And then I'm going to introduce a little bit of this Prussian blue. I'm intentionally using a cooler blue rather than the warmer blue because I want it to kind of neutralize that yellow. And sure enough, we're getting this murky greenish tan, which is actually really close to what I see in the sand. I'm going to need to mix up plenty of it. So more paint here. And when we apply this wet and wet, on the paper, it's gonna lighten up quite a bit. Now, if that's looking too green to you, what's the opposite of green? Red. So you can add a little bit of red to make it a little more gray, a little more neutralized. If your color's too bright, neutralize it with the opposite color on the color wheel. Okay, so let's set that aside. And my blue's already drying, so I'm gonna mix up a little bit more just to make sure I have enough and set that down. All right, now we wet the paper with clean water. Make sure your brush is totally clean. My tape is popping up, so. All right, so we're gonna cover the whole background here, especially where the blue is gonna be right next to the sand tone. Just carefully paint around your shell with your water. Don't get your shell wet yet. All right, so all around the shell with clean water, we're making the paper damp. Okay, so let's start with the blue. I'm gonna remove any excess puddles and pooling. So just it's too dark, remove some on your paper towel. Swipe your blue across the top. Set that aside. Grab your sand tone. Now you're gonna paint that right up next to the blue. If it's too dark, remove some on your paper towel. Do you want it to be a little bit lighter? So I'm painting that all around the shell. Working quickly before my paper dries out. I'm gonna lift some of that color back out on this side. I think it's too dark. And while it's still wet, you can push and pull the paint and 
kind of manipulate it to get the shapes that you want. Just don't mess with that edge too much or it'll lose that soft effect of being lost in the background. Okay, to help lighten up some areas and lift the paint back out, I'm taking my clean half inch brush and just scooping some of the color right back out. Removing any water or excess paint on the paper towel before going back in. And this is helping it look like bumpy sand, like maybe there's some footprints back there. Sand is rarely just flat, right? There's creatures and people that walk around on it. Okay, so there's our background. We got that in super quick. Let's rinse out those colors. The next thing we're gonna paint is the shadow cast by the shell. And in the reference photo, it's got a significantly blue look to it. I'm gonna start with my ultramarine. I'm gonna mix in some of this red, the cool red, to make it more purpley. Then I'm gonna introduce a little bit of brown because I want it to be really dark and more blue, more brown. <laughs> so keep adding colors until you get the color that you want. And sure enough, I have a really dark, murky, it almost looks like my indigo color. So if you have indigo instead and you're not using pan paints, you can use indigo. And I'm just gonna paint in the shadow. If your paper's still damp, make sure you don't have any extra water in your brush. And just go in and paint that whole shape. Stay within your pencil lines you can. And because the paper is still damp, it is softening quite a bit. Now remember we talked about that lost edge. Right now it's a hard edge. So let's fix that by painting the shadow right up next to it on the shell immediately. So I'm going in with brown, a dark, dark brown, and I'm going to paint that right next to the blue. And just painting around a couple of those little contour lines, those little curves on the side of the shell. Then I'm going to take this, it looks like burnt sienna. It's um, Venetian red, I believe, English Venetian red. This color is similar to burnt sienna, so if you have that, that'll work. And I'm painting the warm shadow carefully on the left side of the shell, taking a little more of that dark blue that I already mixed up. Throwing that in there, right up next to the red tone, and then grabbing some more of my brownish red, continuing to paint in the shadow. And you can see that those colors are just blending seamlessly on the left side of the painting, and we are indeed losing that edge just like we intended, which is awesome. This kind of all at once type of painting is often necessary when you're working with watercolor because it's so dependent on the timing, the drying time, and all of that. But as long as you know what you're gonna do before you do it, set your intention, and you can do practice run ahead of time, it's not that bad, you guys can do this. I promise you can do this. It does get easier. So now we are working on dry paper. We did not pre-wet the shell. So every brush stroke we put down here is going to stay put, which can come as quite a bit of a relief to those of us who are control freaks about it. So I'm just painting shadow shapes that I see in the reference photo. The darkest shadows. There's that strong triangular shaped shadow here at the top in between the bumps and then another strong shadow on this side of the bump. These shadows are so important. Go dark with these. Don't be afraid. It's going to look so awesome when you paint these in. This is one of those elements that can help the object look like it's popping off the page. And I'm guessing if you guys follow my channel, you really like realism. <laughs> Most of my paintings are quite realistic and I love realism too. I mean, what's better than trying to copy the great nature herself, right? So I do try to get it as close as I can, but as an artist, we have to use all of these different tools on hand to create that illusion because we are just painting on a 2D surface. I'm just adding a couple little contours in the sand Nothing too crazy. A little shadow on the underside of our shell. And if you still have that shadow tone mixed up, that dark blue that you mixed and a little bit of this brownish red, that's a great tone for your shadows. Stick with that. I'm gonna mix in a little bit more of my brownish red because as I'm coming over to this side of the shell, it's emerging into the light. So it doesn't need to be quite so dark but I'm still taking note of all the dark shadows and painting those first. This might seem like a backwards approach. And if you've always heard watercolor, you have to start light to dark. 
that is true in a lot of cases, but with not with every painting, there aren't any hard, fast rules. In fact, starting with the shadows is a great way to set yourself up for getting correct values everywhere else in the painting. Because often, if you start too light, your finished painting may end up too light because you're making judgments based on those very light initial washes. Okay, so I'm getting a little bit lost in my bumps. Let's do this contour. If you're not sure where you are, go back to something that you know. And I know these shapes here are correct. So I will work from there. Okay, I'm gonna paint in this really dark shadow here with my dark brown, and there's a little bit of blue in my brush. So when those two colors mix in my brush, it's producing a neutralized, almost black. My hand is a little shaky today. Basic dark shapes are all blocked in. It's already looking <laughs> like an object. It looks like a little mouse almost to me. <laughs> With the shadow over here, it looks like a little tail. Well, okay, it's a mouse shell. I admit it. So I'm trying to refine where I was here. There's this bump. And then these bumps here, I didn't actually draw those on. Oops. So I'm just going to draw them in now. Shadow shape here. That's why I got lost because I didn't draw those in. And the bumps get a little bit smaller as they work their way down the side of the shell. And we freehand sketch this, guys. It's not going to be perfect. And unless someone is comparing your artwork to the reference photo, they're not going to know. So don't worry. Okay, so let's go ahead and do midtones now. Capturing the actual essence, the color of this actual shell. It is a orangey brown. There's some tan in there. So let's clean up our palette a little bit so we can kind of start fresh with fresh colors. Okay, so let's start by creating the yellowish tone that we see in the top of the shell. I'm just going to use this yellow ochre color and mixing in a little bit of water so it's kind of watered down. Let's just do a base color like that, covering everything except our shadows, just paint around those. Um, and the reason is yellow ochre is actually kind of a semi transparent color. So if you paint it over the top of other layers, it may end up looking a little bit murky or dusty. And then on some of these bumps, there are little highlights. So the little circles of the paper are showing through on each of those bumps. And then here towards the bottom, there are definitely some stripes along the side that are lighter. So you can leave those untouched by the paint too. So right now what we're looking for and we're focusing on is mid-tones, any areas that are orange or yellow, just paint around any whites that you see. And you're asking, well, this isn't orange. You're just painting everything yellow. Yep, we're working in layers. So much of this will get covered up, but it's helping guide our next decisions and inform where we need to leave the white of the paper. Well, here at the bottom, I'm just gonna cover this whole front of the shell up with that yellow ochre. And there's a strong highlight right here, so watch out for that. Paint around that. But everything else you can cover with pigment. And then let's go in and adjust our color. So we need more red in here, don't we? This bottom part of the shell is rather peach colored. So I'm gonna take this cadmium red and while it's still damp, I can apply that right over the top as long as I don't have too much water in my brush. And the two colors will charge together and mix right on the surface, wet and wet. Do that over the top of these shapes, again, avoiding the highlight. Now I'm painting quicker and more loosely, having fun with these details. The reason I'm doing that is I'm trying to keep myself from overstating all the details. I want it to still look like a painting. I don't want to go over the top. Now I'm taking this English Venetian red, which is similar to burnt sienna, and I'm going to start articulating these little bumps with more color. I'm allowing my brush to miss little gaps so we still get a sense of the yellow ochre underneath and the texture that we're trying to convey. Contour lines, guys. They're gonna really help your shell stand out of the paper and look 3D. So this reddish tone over the top of the yellow is helping us get that orangier sense in the shell. And we can always go back and boost our shadows some more if they're starting to look like they've faded a bit, especially as we paint over the top of them with these mid-tones. Can always come back in and boost those again. Okay, so let's grab some dark brown. 
go over the shadow here again. Not too much water in your brush. You'll end up with cauliflowers and blooms if you have water, excess water there. And so now I'm darkening the shadow side a little bit, even going over these highlights darker. We're getting so close, we're almost done. So let's just add a few more dark shadow shapes, little details to help the bumps feel more 3D. These shadows I'm talking about happen to be a little lighter than our actual shadow. So I guess they'd be more like mid-tones. Now, if you really wanna add some boost of color, if it's looking just a little bit too, I don't know, not colorful enough, you can add some pops of warm yellow. I'm gonna put one right here and a couple little pops of yellow throughout the bottom of the shell. And then here at the base of some of these bumps on the shell. And then I'm gonna add another pop of red. Cadmium red. Color is another way to help something appear to be turning in space. And so these little color shifts can help with that too. And if any of your highlights are still too light, you can cover those up. And I'll add a little more red right down here. This shadow needs to go darker. So you guys can see I didn't go crazy with the details in the shell. What I emphasize are the shadow and light shapes. And there we go, there's the finished shell. So let's just remove the tape and see how we did. Yeah, there's the finished shell. I love that super soft border. It's bleeding out a little bit here at the top, but it almost gives the effect of heat waves radiating from the sand just before it meets the sea. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Let me know if you'd like to see more ocean or beach scenes or shells. They're so much fun to paint. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.